Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, um, today, my my sermon is called Everyday Role Models. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. And I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you worship, Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you for bringing us here today to spend this time together with you, and Lord. I pray, Lord God, that something I will say will touch every heart, every mind, every spirit. You know the places where people are right now, so just be with them. Say something different to us, but say it all at the same time. God, minister to our hearts, minister to our body, minister to our souls, minister to our spirits. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, um, this, I was watching, um, Whoopi Gold, uh, um, Kelly Clarkson's interview with Whoopi Goldberg about her new book. And just as a matter of chit chat, um, they were, um, Kelly had mentioned how good Whoopi looked. And Whoopi was saying, uh, yeah, I walk and whatever. But I, and I take shots. And Kelly said, you know what? I do that too. I I take shots um, for my weight and for my health and for my um, sugar. Um, and for, to, to regulate, not just sugar, but to regulate her body. Um, because sometimes your body, if it doesn't regulate properly, everything goes crazy. If your if your thyroid gland is overactive or underactive, um, something your body doesn't regulate sugars properly or certain nutrients properly, so it's harder to lose weight and it's harder to do certain things with your body. So um, when Whoopi admitted that she was on shots for her health, that gave Kelly freedom to say, yeah, I want it to. And she got some sort of backlash for, for saying that. And I sat back and I, and I thought, first of all, what right do we have to say, oh no, she shouldn't have, she shouldn't have told us all oh, that she was walking or whatever to, um, and not tell us this part of it. And my whole thing was, first of all, first of all, that wasn't what the interview was all about it was just a matter of chit chat how are you what you do and whatever the interview was about whoopi and it in her new book that was the interview but as an opener uh kelly just said oh you look great and whatever they got to talk and you know you know what like people do and and the second thing i thought was What right do we have to judge her for doing what she has to do for her own um, body and her own body chemistry and to regulate the sugars or whatever she has to do with her own body and whatever. And um, because 
because Whoopi admitted it for herself, Whoopi said, well, I take shots to help me. Kelly, Kelly felt free to say, yeah, I do that too. Because when a person admits their pain and you're going through the same thing, it makes it easier a kind of freeing to admit yours. And I was thinking the reason why she probably didn't say that, yeah, I take shots too, is she was afraid of the judgment that people would give her. And that's exactly what happened. I think that, um, and this thought led me to everyday role models. We often look at celebrities or uh, even pastors or people that we see in the public eye and we look at them as our role models and whatever. And like when they make a mistake, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe she didn't do this or didn't do that. Um, well, she did because she's a person and she's doing what she has to do for her own health. We have no idea of her struggles. We have no idea of whatever we think we do. And no matter how real a person says they're being, there is always a layer of privacy with every person. Every person keeps a layer of privacy. And we could never know what is fully in a person's heart. And I and I just said instead of um, looking looking quote unquote looking to these people as role models and being disappointed when we find out they're just like us, when we find out they're just people, we should look to the people that are around us in our everyday lives, our mothers, our teachers, our, our crossing guards, or even for those of you who have kids. Sometimes your kids can model something that you would want to emulate. And um, though looking up to, the, to those celebrities or people on TV or whatever, movies are great, but let's not forget the people in our everyday lives like that exemplify what we want to be. But cautionary tale, when we look up to them, let's not let's not say that they let's not think that they they are uh, are not human because they are. They do everything that that we do, and the only the only being that's perfect is the Lord Jesus, and we need to look to Him and His perf and His perfection uh, to to show us really how to live. But if we want to. Um, if we want to have an example, why not look at the examples that are around us every day? The people that step in when we need to. You know, I realized the other day um, that I already have who I need and I already have God's favor over my life that I don't need anything he doesn't want me to have. And I don't need anyone he doesn't want me to have. And in his time, 
and in his way he will he will send me the people I need. That if I, if I just seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, he will send me what I need. And that's what I, I realized in a very real way. So I think because I think so badly people want to see people um, who they think are better than them succeed, but like they're just, everybody's just a person and no matter how good you think they are, if they sing or whatever, they're just a person with struggles like you whether that person is a celebrity and whether that or whether that person is um, not famous at all but they exemplify the excellence that you want but there's always a part of them everybody's got a dark side speaking of kelly clarkson that was a song everybody's got a dark side so no matter how much you see the light and things you like, keep in mind that everybody's got a dark side. And um, that you don't want to emulate. If they're human, they've got a dark side. They've got fears, they've got anxieties. And we we're all in this game together. We're all in this thing called life together, just doing the best we can. Even our pastors, we we look up to them like they can do no wrong, but they're just human like the rest of us. They have a special calling on their lives. Like I have a calling on my life to preach. And I have an anointing on my life to preach, but it doesn't mean I'm not human with with um, no struggles and stuff like that. I am, I am, and and when I have the anointing to preach, you have to understand that it's not me speaking. It is really not me speaking. Sometimes people say that and they're like, it's you, you're just being whatever, of course it's you. But for me, I can tell you, sometimes I watch, sometimes I watch my sermon back and like, I'm like, that's me? I don't even remember seeing that. That was so good. I, I think I'm going to take that for my life. Um for myself because it it is literally the Holy Spirit speaking but when the spirit um, but when that special anointing to preach lifts I'm me again I'm just, I'm flawed I'm I'm I have struggles with Lust sometimes, although that is getting better, and other things sometimes. I don't say the right thing or do the right thing, but I sometimes. But I am getting better, and I'm going through, and I'm growing through as I go through, and. And that, and that's what I've learned throughout my life, is to grow as I go, you know. And I'm not going to know everything. I'm not going to know everything, but I, but I will learn something. And I think when you understand when you look around and see the everyday people that you can, you want to emulate something, 
in their lives, I think it will make your life much richer. Um, I think, I think people desperately want to see someone like them actually make it and, and come above. But what they don't really see is that coming above comes with a price. That coming up, that, that coming out comes with anxieties in its own thing. I'm not saying that they don't love what they do. I'm saying that fame comes with a price, comes with a price. That YouTube thing comes with a price. Scrutiny is not fun because you get a lot of opinions. And a lot of people say a lot of things. And everybody thinking that they can have a, an opinion about you. And it is really hard. I felt so kind of... Uh, kind of uh, scared for, for, for Ian Tommy because when, when he won at such a young age, um, and he, I saw a video that said, uh, oh, he's the savior of uh, Aloha, and I thought, oh my god, and all the positive reactions and uh, all that, all the accolades, every, everything, everyone was cheering for him, whatever. And that part was great. But I began to think of the scrutiny and I prayed, Lord, just let him handle this, this, this scrutiny and this fame game because it just it's a lot and i said it's too much pressure it's too much pressure and i thought just let the kid live just let him live he's talented he can sing he's actually my favorite singer fyi um uh, but uh I said, just let him live and learn and the rest of us and grow like the rest of us. I think, I think people are too, too quick to put other people on pedestals and when they fall and when they show their humanness, um, we're, too, we're too quick to tear them down. And I think we need, we need to have uh, more grace for each other. We need to, as I said, look to those in our lives that that uh, we can emulate. And we don't have to emulate every single other person, but just pick the things that, that you see and people that are of, of God, but don't uh, put that person so high that they can't do any wrong, they can't make any mistakes. Remember, we're all human, and we're all weak somewhere. I don't care where it is. We're all weak somewhere, and we all fall somewhere. And we're all just learning in this life thing together. And we just need to be, um, have grace more for each other than we've ever had before. And I think when you have grace for the other person, um, you can, you can see that there are, are that they are human and embrace their humanness and not feel shunned by their humanness 
and people would feel free to say, you know what, I'm not perfect. I'm not okay. You know, I, I was, I was thinking about, um, like, I think that we lost the ability to just, to just be human, to just be not real, because being real is a sin, but to just show our humanness to say, hey, I'm going through this. I, I need help with this. I think we've we thought that it, that was a sense of weakness, but it's truly a sense of, to me, of strength. Because, like I said before, when you can show your humanness to someone, that person could say, hey, I'm not alone. And they, they could come alongside and you guys can help each other. But it's, it's this thing of perfection that is killing the church. It's this thing that we, we just do the vertical thing and the humanness gets lost. I was thinking the other day of even our music in the church, how I think we need both kinds of music. We need vertical music. We need um, vertical music, like music to God, music to worship with God. But we need horizontal music, that in the music to each other, that includes God, not just um, not just uh, um, um, romantic relationship, although that too. But we also need uh, songs about friendship that that in include God. We, we need songs about romantic relationships that include God. I, I think a lot of times when Christians um, go outside and sing what we call secular music, um, I think that's because there's no song to help them with that in the church. Like, there are all these songs to God, and as I say, we need those songs, keep them coming. But I think we need songs as well from humans as human to help with our vertical relationships. And that includes God. We need songs that in, that express anger, frustration, and all that in a godly manner. We need both, because the word of, um, the cross is two two sided. It's both vertical and horizontal. Vertical is from man to God. And we've got those, we've got those in spades, but we need the horizontal Christian music as well. And I think if we have real Christian music about what people are going through and how to deal with that, I think more people would see themselves and want to come to church. I. I think um, what we've done, we've made God too high and too lofty. It's like, I have to be this, I have to be that. And yes, God has standards, but um, you, can, you can come as you are and I'll get you to where you need to be. He won't keep you as you are. He'll, he'll, he'll get you to where you need to be, but he'll do it. Um, 
in a way that he knows you need it. You know, so you don't have to change right away. He'll go at the speed he thinks is okay, okay for you, and, and it's just kind of a wonderful thing. When I was when I was reading this book, um, I just recently started. I used to post on Rachel's Reads the actual book that I was reading. But now that my uh, mouse, um, my right click mouse doesn't work, I can't uh, post the link. So what I started doing was instead of posting the link to an actual book on Amazon, I started making videos of each book. Sometimes I do uh, two books in one video. Sometimes I do one, and um, I I started. Uh, I was I was reading this book about how um, how this preacher's son found out. Uh, his father, who was a preacher, owned, owned the sex club and all that stuff and how he became disheartened. And I was thinking, I need to write a Christian answer to this, to this question because it was so, it, the the book was okay, but it was um, so negatively towards the church. But instead of saying it was so negative, I began to feel that this is the cry of people's hearts. So instead of writing writing Christian songs about stuff that we've been writing about for years, what we need to do as songwriters and as preachers, we need to say, what's the cry of this? What's the cry of this? What's underneath this? Like, look past the nastiness, look past the sex, look past the violence or whatever, and ask, Lord, Lord, what is the cry of this and how can I tackle it? using my particular media, which if, if I were songwriter, how can I tackle it in my music? How can I, you know, tackle it if I'm a preacher in my sermon? Um, you know, I, because I think there's a cry and the world doesn't even understand there's a cry. They don't even understand how accessible God can be. They don't even understand that God is not like the Simps Simpson God, like this big um, person in the sky with a beard and a robe, like ready to get you. That's not God. Uh, God is very accessible to people. He loves you so much, and he'll walk you through your life. And and walking with Jesus, it doesn't mean the harder hard stuff stops. The hard stuff is just like it doesn't stop, but it gets easier because you have someone to walk with you, and he sends the right relationships. If you submit your life to him, he sends the right relationships into your life. It's incredible. And yes, can it be a little bit rough? Yes, it can. But you will understand and get to know who you are. Because in life, because the Lord knows, knows you, he will reveal bit by bit who you are and who, who he will create you to be. 
and he'll send the right relationships into your life, and he'll give you revelation. It's awesome, it really is. And if you want that relationship with God, just tell him, Lord, Lord, I want that relationship with you. Be honest with him about where you are, and he'll fill you. A lot of people just say, say the sinner's prayer. I don't believe in the sinner's prayer. I believe that God wants to hear, hear each and every individual voice. God wants to hear where a person is. God wants, God wants to hear your voice for what you're going through. God wants to hear where you are at right now. And don't be afraid to be honest. Don't be afraid to say, God, I don't know if you're real. I don't know, but something Rachel said today really got to me. And I just want to explore this thing. So if you could help me explore this thing, maybe we could work stuff out together. Or just tell them exactly where you are. You don't need pretty words or whatever. Because what I'm learning is um, the Lord's, uh, the Bible said to believe and confess. But the, Lord, but the Lord revealed to me a layer. He's like, he said to me, but if you don't believe, still come. And if you can't confess that I'm God yet, still come. We'll get there. So wherever you are, whoever you are, whether you believe, still come. Whether you're unsure, still come. Wherever you sit, you can still call out to God and say, Lord, I need you. You can say, Lord, I'm not sure, but something that you said today really pulled on me. And I don't know if you're, you're real or whatever. I think we, we've, um, in the church, we've made it so hard. We've said, well, we often use the common scripture, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. But my question is, uh, what if you don't believe and, or you don't, you don't confess? My uh, what I'm coming to now is wherever you sit, however you speak, whether you speak street or whether you speak proper, you can come to God with that. Whether you speak Spanish or whether you speak English, whether you speak Finnish, whether you speak French, wherever you are, whatever language you speak, whatever is in your heart, God wants to hear about it. Whatever's in your spirit, whatever frustrations you have, what wherever you sit, God wants to hear it and God wants to heal you today. This is a day I'm sensing, a day of healing, a day of restoration, a day of wholeness. God wants that for you today. He doesn't want, want you to just say a bunch of words after me, he doesn't want to hear my words in your lips. He wants to hear your words. He wants to hear the cry of your heart. What is in, what is in your spirit today? What is in your heart today? He wants to hear that. He wants to deal with that. And then if you, if you say that today, um, I will plot. I can't promise you much, but I can promise you that he will be with you in your pain. He will be with you wherever you are. He doesn't want, like, a sinner's prayer. 
He wants your heart. He wants yourself. I often say that this, uh, God doesn't want your sin. He wants your in. So which means he just doesn't want your, you know, what you think is wrong. He wants you to say, Lord, whatever it is, I'm in. Or even if you're not sure you want to be in, you could say, Lord, let's experience this thing together. Some things you said just tugged on me, and I really want uh, to experience this thing together. And after you've um, poured out your heart to God, um, feel free to uh, contact me or, you know, message me either on Facebook or leave a comment on YouTube and say, you know, now what? And I'll do my best to help you. As I said, I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers, but I will do my best to help you. Thanks, guys. See you later. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Trust in